Welcome, this isn't for the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament or anything like that or anything. I don't know what this is for. I just have been playing uh, Falling Sky and I know it's fairly new. So some people might want to see a bit of it because uh, they're waiting for their package or they don't know if they want to get a package. But um, So let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, this is part of the coin series. It's the latest game to come out of that series. Um, and it's very different from a lot of the other ones. So let's assume you're familiar with the coin series and let's look at some of the differences because that might be interesting to you. So one difference is we're in ancient times, um, ancient compared to us, though if you were born like 2,000 years ago, this wouldn't be ancient at all. There would be another ancient time. So that's important to remember. So, um, one thing you'll notice is there's no support or opposition little markers. Instead, there are these different tribes here. And if you put these things on there, they're, they look kind of like bases. They're not bases. That just shows your that tribe's allegiance to your faction. Okay? So that's that's a lot of what, what you're going for is tribal allegiance. Um, Rome just wants tribes to either be allied to them or to no one or to not exist. Uh, that's kind of their thing. Um, the Audui, Audui, they are um, Rome's kind of buddies. They're the, the, the Celts that are uh, trying to be friends with Rome so that they can, they can benefit. They're also traders. They're very, they're kind of the money men. Um, they can do the suborn activity, which you, you might remember from previous games. So they're able to kind of manipulate things in that way. Um, and they just want to have more allegiances than everyone else. So they want to, so this is their total victory thing here. It's a relative victory uh, uh, marker, which, you know, is, uh, which is fun. Um, here we have the Arverni. They're the Celts that are against Roman coming in, Rome coming in and Romans coming in, and they are trying to have a certain amount of tribes allied to them and a certain amount of Rome not on the map. Uh, so they're kind of the, the main kind of opposition, I would say. Like we have this kind of pole here, though I'm playing the, f the longest game because I like to play longer games. Um, the game kind of started with a, there's like a polar fight between Rome and Belgic, the Belgics up here. We'll call it Belgium. It's not Belgium, but I like to think of it as Belgium. Um, maybe they're the the ancestors of Belgium, but they start off up here kind of having this struggle. Uh, Belgium's done pretty well, partially because they've been making use of Germany. So there's this fifth faction, and this is another thing that's very different about the game. I guess I was going to focus on what was different, wasn't I? Um, there's this fifth faction that uh, does does a series of things during the winter phase, that's the propaganda phase, or whatever, the kind of moving things around phase, the shifting phase, the shifting phase, we'll call it the shifting phase. Um, they do a, a, they have a, a very simple, actually, uh, it's not hard to figure out what they do, like maybe the AI is for the players, I never use it, so I don't know what that's like, but it's very simple to go through that, they do these automated things, they basically just go straight down the list here, first they rally, then they march, then they raid, then they battle and ambush, and that's what they do every, every time one of these cards turns up. But the bell Belgics, uh, they get to, they can also control the Germans, um, but they have to be careful because they don't want the Germans to, to blow up in their faces because they will, they don't, you know, when they activate during the shifting phase, they don't really care um, who they're fighting as they just want them to be players of the game and they want to cause havoc. Um, so that's another uh, big different thing. Um, Rome is obviously like most most of these games these coin games have a big hammer faction you know the counterinsurgent faction will will be like the big hammer faction Rome is that faction they they work a lot differently than in past games um they're very concerned with their like line of support from from their kind of like more strongly held region down here provincia uh, which kind of connects to Rome um so they need like a a trail of agreement there. So so far, the Adui, 
had been like providing that for them, but Rome just moved against them. So that's probably going to change. So they're no longer going to be able to trace their trail. So their actions are going to get a lot more expensive, but the Audui were going to win. So Rome, this is Rome, the Roman council here, headed by uh, Caesar, who's Bix Beetleman. And then he has his advisors for when he can't make up his mind. So I use these cards for when I can't make up my mind. Um, but sometimes I, I, you know, just using Bix, I couldn't make up my mind. And so he had to have some help. And I decided the rest of them should have some help too. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that, they're, they're really scary, really scary, powerful in the, in the game, but they kind of have to stay focused. Uh, oh, another thing that's different. We have these leader cylinders. The, the leaders are done differently than Liberty or Death. Um, Liberty or Death, they had the little, like, kind of more standard GMT standy guys. Um, these leaders can flip over, but they don't flip over like Gurias do. They flip over... Um, to show whether or not they're the, like the special leader or if they're just one of their nameless successors. So that's what that is. Um, a lot of this, any faction that has a leader, their special activities are going to be, for the most part, there might be exceptions that I haven't gotten into yet. Their special activities are going to be tied to where that leader is because there's no radios. So that's another big difference. Uh, you can't just do things willy-nilly all over the map. Um, also, when you do a command, uh, you have to you go by starting space, not the space you're moving into. So if I wanted to move all these guys to these spaces, I would just have to pay for this space, not for the destination. So it's starting, not destination. Whereas in the past games, um, I'd have to pay for each space that I was I was doing. So that, that sometimes is nice if you're trying to just move these guys. But say if I wanted to move um, these guys back here, I would have to pay three because I have to pay one for each space that I'm moving. Um, so that's something that's different. What else is different? Um, these are like cit citadels or forts. They just affect combat. Combat is different. Um, it's uh, more, it's got a formula, but it's not as complicated as Liberty or Death was. Uh, there's no dice, die rolling or anything like that. Um, but there are a few more choices in terms of combat instead of just like you can know that you can take this many people for this many people that you put down. Um, other differences, uh, the Gurias are, are very different, actually. They don't have to flip over for as many things, and they flip over to do different things. There's no terror in this game at all. Um, they can raid for money, which flips them over. Ambush is done a little bit differently. Anyway, I could I could get into the weeds on that, but this is a little overview of the game. I'm really enjoying it so far. Hopefully you will too if you ever uh, get the opportunity.